My goal was to see if I could be the first man to reach the North Pole. Luckily, I had access to equipment that was far ahead of its time. And so I headed due north, guided by my trusty compass, packed with enough supplies and gear to satisfy any adventurer. I knew it would be a long and arduous journey, but I felt up to the task. If I'd only known what fate had in store for me. When I was tired, I stopped and rested. When I was hungry, I ate. Malnutrition and hypothermia being the chief dangers in a polar expedition. That and polar bears, the most dangerous land predator known to man. And I just hoped we didn't see any of those. I just trusted luck in my spirit of adventure and kept pressing forward. Each day of this arduous journey was more difficult than the one before. But I continued to press northward. This was only the first stage of my journey. My helicopter, the Killer Bee, would only take me so far. Soon the temperatures would be too cold to allow for the operation of any type of aircraft. Blast! It happened sooner than I expected. The Killer Bee had taken me as far as she could take me. It was time for the second phase of my journey. The all-terrain vehicle. I would come back for my helicopter upon the completion of my journey. I was on the ground from this point forward. The second phase of my journey had begun, and I was feeling optimistic. In the Wolverine 7, I could travel over both water and ice. I kept heading due north. No need to worry about distance until I got a little closer to my destination. The sheer beauty of this country was breathtaking, but yet there's a certain loneliness about it that was hard to shake. I was excited to be on an adventure, but I was a thousand miles from nowhere and on my own. In all my travels, I'd never seen country so peaceful. I had to keep reminding myself that I was in one of the most deadly places on the planet. Thank heavens for the Wolverine 7. Navigation was easy with amphibious traveling ability, but the bitter cold made this stage of my journey most arduous. I'd traveled very far and it was time to check my distance from the North Pole. My trusty sextant would tell me my latitude. First put the vertical line on the horizon, and then split the viewfinder, bringing the sun down to the horizon line, and the angle tells you your latitude. I was only halfway there, but running dangerously low on supplies. I took a look at the horizon, but there was nothing but ice as far as the eye could see. Blast. All alone in a barren, frozen wasteland. Endeavor to persevere. That's my motto. Pressing north through the frigid waters of the Arctic. And even though this journey had led me thousands of miles from civilization, I no longer felt like I was totally alone. A strange feeling was growing inside of me that I was being watched. Whether these were the eyes of friend or foe remained to be seen. But perhaps it was only my imagination. My only fear was that perhaps I was being stalked by a polar bear. One driven mad by hunger in this harsh climate, perhaps. Well, I certainly understood. I was nearly out of provisions myself in this environment and already taken its toll on me. All I could do was keep pushing north and hope for the best. After several days of pushing forward, I stopped to take a look ahead and I saw a most welcome sight. A clan of Eskimos, clinked from the looks of them. An excellent opportunity to do some trading. The next phase of my journey would involve me crossing a shelf of nearly sheer ice, and I needed a good team of sled dogs. I hated the thoughts of parting with the Wolverine 7. It was a sturdy vehicle. But I would let the Eskimos use it for a while. After my journey was complete, I would return here and reclaim it. The Klingons always took care of things in their possession and they were a very honorable people. They always welcomed strangers and traitors as long as they were of good intent. And I'd have to say that after months of travel it was great to see the faces of other human beings. Luckily I'm fluent in the Klingon language. 
They gave me an excellent handmade bow and arrow fishing system so I would never go hungry. And a most excellently crafted set of snowshoes. I'd never seen such handiwork. Both prizes would be most useful in my journey ahead. Just for trading, I'd brought along bags of tea and sugar and coffee. I made gifts of these items along with a nice army blanket and a large bag of rice. Finally, I gave him a nice rifle with two boxes of munitions. I had enough supplies now to reach the North Pole, and most importantly of all, a nice team of sled dogs. I was on my way. I continued to travel due north, occasionally using my sextant to check my distance to the North Pole. Every day of travel was bringing me closer to my destination. If I continued on my path, I would reach the North Pole within a few weeks. These Klingit sled dogs were magnificent animals. Onward they pressed across the Arctic tundra without fear or hesitation. A jolly good show. I continued to make igloos for shelter when I grew tired and needed rest. Staying warm here in the Arctic was the most important thing for survival. The terrain was very difficult. I tried not to push the sled dogs too hard, giving them rest whenever they needed it. Come to think of it, I was feeling rather exhausted myself. But it was during one of these rests that I made a most startling discovery. Scouting the areas ahead carefully was crucial to survival. Unfortunately, all I could see in this barren wasteland was more ice and snow. But sometimes it pays to take a look back to see where you've been. That's when I first saw them. Those blasted Norwegians, trying to beat me to the North Pole. By Jove, we had a race on our hands. But I wasn't about to let myself be defeated by a couple of Norwegians and their flea-bitten huskies. We had to hit the trail, and without a doubt the sightseeing was over. My trusty team of sled dogs and I pushed forward at a relentless pace. We were too close to reaching our goal to turn back now. But hot on our trail the whole time were those Norwegians. A couple of persistent fellows, I'd have to give them credit for that. But I had to reach the North Pole first. By now it was a matter of national pride. Our perilous journey continued, and each mile was more miserable than the mile before. While the South Pole lies on a continental landmass, the North Pole is located in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, amid waters that are almost permanently covered with constantly shifting sea ice. Using my trusty sextant, I continue to monitor the distance between myself and the North Pole. Every passing week saw me one step closer to my ultimate destination. I was feeling optimistic about my chances, but that strange feeling of being watched continued to grow in me. Perhaps it was intuition developed through years of adventure, but I knew I was not alone. The race to the North Pole continued and my chief concerns were hypothermia, starvation, and those blasted Norwegians. I began to feel sorry for the Huskies, relentlessly driven forward before the whips of their merciless masters. But for whatever the cause, they were clearly gaining on me. And what was worse, we were headed towards open icy waters and I needed a kayak. I decided to take a detour to try to find a nearby Inuit village that I knew about. I never would have strayed from the straight path if I'd have known what kind of trouble it would have ended up causing me. My detour would take me several days, but I couldn't move forward without a kayak. After a long and difficult search of barren ice plains that all looked the same, I found the tribe of Inuit Eskimos that I'd been looking for. The Inuit were excellent craftsmen and survivalists. And like all the indigenous tribes of the Arctic regions, they were excellent traders. Luckily, I am fluent in Inuit. I hated to say goodbye to my huskies, but I traded the Inuit, my dog sled, and team for a nice kayak that I believe once belonged to my grandfather. He was a great explorer, known to trade with all the Eskimo tribes. But heavens rest his soul, he left one summer for an Arctic adventure, and was never heard from again. 
Well, that wasn't going to happen to me. I was going to beat these blasted Norwegians to the North Pole. But I knew they'd been pushing forward steady. My detour had cost me a lot of precious time, and I had a long way to go. All I could do was make sure that I was going in the right direction, keep pushing forward, and try to get myself back on track. I was closer than ever to the North Pole, but the further north I got, the more perilous this land became. I lost all sense of time, driven forward only by my instinct to survive. leading away from the wreckage led to only one conclusion. Up until now, I had hoped my presence had gone unnoticed by the local wildlife, but now I realized that I had been discovered by a large polar bear, a thousand pounds of muscle, teeth, and fur, and knowing this environment was hungry, no doubt. But I also saw some other tracks that confused me, but there wasn't time to worry about that now. I began to walk north, inch by inch, mile by miserable mile. severely injured in my encounter with that polar bear, but my life had been saved by that poor misunderstood creature. He was nowhere to be found, but I did find my equipment and supplies. All hope had not been lost. I might still complete my quest and be the first man to reach the North Pole, but not if I waited any longer there. The first thing I had to do was get back on the right track. I'd completely lost my bearings and I needed to scout out a path as due north as possible. I would be making my way across sheer blocks of ice, 
Floating in the Arctic Ocean as cold as a whippersnap. Blast that polar bear for destroying my kayak. That boat would come in handy. My sextant told me that I was closer to the North Pole than I thought. But I'd never beat the Norwegians having to detour around large gaps in the ice. I endeavored on, of course, but with little hope for success. I thought the first stages of my journey were miserable, but this stage was truly the worst. For days I worked my way slowly north across the ice, when I saw something peculiar ahead, and it wasn't exactly encouraging. If my instincts were correct, I'd stumbled upon the answer to an old family mystery. My grandfather had made it here to this point before he gave in to the harsh elements here. Here lies Colonel Garrison Parks II, well-renowned explorer, adventurer, and survivalist. Well, forget the last one, he didn't survive, but he was a great explorer and adventurer. And what better way to honor him than to reach the North Pole before those blasted Norwegians? I made fantastic time in my grandfather's kayak. The Pit Viper, he'd named it. He brought it back from the war, where they say he used it to do stealth missions. But I was using it to cross a sea of icebergs in the treacherous land of the Midnight Sun. Proud would he have been to know its fate. I was walking on an iceberg the size of Texas. My grandfather's kayak could take me no further, and from here on out it was up to me in my snowshoes. I continued to push north relentlessly, frequently checking my direction with my compass, and using my trusty sextant to tell me how close I was to the North Pole. The angles were getting smaller and smaller, confirming how close I was to my destination. My journey was nearly at an end. I needed only to map out a path for my final trek. Looking through my telescope, I could see my final destination, the North Pole before my very eyes. But suddenly I realized again that I was not alone. I only heard them at first, but then I saw them. I was only slightly ahead of those blasted Norwegians. But I was closer to the North Pole and I knew I could make it first. I just had to keep trekking forward. But I couldn't just march on with reckless abandon. This was still the most dangerous terrain on Earth. One wrong step and I might become a permanent part of this landscape. Still, I was so close to fame and fortune I could almost taste it. I could already read the headlines. Colonel Garrison Parks IV, world-renowned adventurer and explorer, first man to reach the North Pole. But then, through my telescope, I saw something that I didn't expect. My feral friend had found himself in a perilous situation, barely hanging by his fingertips over a frozen abyss. But I didn't have time for such delays. I had less than a hundred feet to go to beat the Norwegians to the North Pole. If I took the time to save this poor creature, surely the Norwegians would be first to our destination. I was torn between two different duties. Blast, I didn't know what to do. In the end, the choice was easy. I chose to save the friend who had saved me. After all, friendship is more important than fame and fortune. A friendship is a wonderful treasure to find on an adventure. History would go on to show that the North Pole was first reached by those blasted Norwegians. But I gained a friendship that I know will last through the end of my days. And that's the end of this Arctic tale.